Phantasm 2. It's only a dream. It's a dream. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not a dream. It's a phantasm. It's a nightmare. It's a science fiction film. It's one of my favorites, and we'll be talking about it. This is Will. This is horror of it all, and we're going to be talking horror, but we're going to be talking specifically about sci-fi horror. That's right, the science fiction horror that is not always maybe as respected or certainly as talked about as just, say, vampires or ghosts or werewolves or zombies. Well, actually, zombies crisscross and cross over. In the sci-fi uh, horror. They used to be just supernatural horror. Voodoo. And spells and, and such. But now I guess yeah. They are really some of the most important. Sci-fi horror figures. So before we proceed. Into dark. And unsuspecting areas. Of the human psyche. As regarding. Uh, science fiction horror. What exactly is science fiction horror? What are we what are we sort of getting ourselves into when we talk about science fiction horror? Well, officially, uh, Wiki says science fiction horror films are a sub-genre of science fiction and horror films, often revolving around subjects that include, but are not limited to, alien invasions, mad scientists, and are and or experiments gone wrong. Don't you love that, though? Mad scientists. They're mad. They're positively mad. What are they angry about? <laughs> They're crazy. They're mad crazy. And then uh, another, um, I guess, question that many people ask, is horror considered science fiction? Science fiction and horror are very similar genres, even though their cores are different. Horror focuses on creating and exploring fear while sci-fi de deals with the repercussions of the advancement of technology in society. And they give an example, uh, modern Stranger Things, uh, the, the big Netflix hit Stranger Things, shows the similarity between sci-fi and horror. And further on, Stranger Things is an American science fiction horror drama created by the Duffer Brothers, who also serve as showrunners and are executive producers on this Netflix hit. Wow, it's pretty old now. 2016. Yeah, uh, first season was released on Netflix in 2016. So now we can, you know, go down lists, many lists, dozens of science fiction horror films. Um, I know I could certainly name and explore many, many more, but for our podcast and our intentions tonight, We'll be doing five, and these pretty much are my top five. Um, you know, sometimes I might be more in the mood for something else, or I could say I rate that higher. To me, rankings are interesting. The top five, top ten, top twenty-five, best of. I mean, it's all cool and fun. It's great reference, but in the end, you know, what matters is what you enjoy, what you like to share with the world, and uh, why you do. You know, why do you love? Um, like for me, why do I love Phantasm? And I'll try to share and explain, because I'm not even sure it myself at times. I think that is very universal with everybody. Like, you know generally why you like something, in this case a film, but why you really repeatedly love to watch it and over. Sometimes you might not be sure. So let's start off my list. And my first entry is the classic Frankenstein. Frankenstein, 1931. Is a 1931 American pre-code sci-fi horror film directed by James Whale. Based on Mary Shelley's 1818 novel Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. It stars Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein, an obsessed scientist who digs up corpses with his assistant in order to assemble a living being from body parts. And of course, the resulting creature is portrayed by Boris Karloff. The makeup for the monster was provided by Jack Pierce. 
The film's cast also includes Mae Clark, John Bowles, Dwight Fry, and Edward Van Sloan. It was a commercial success upon release and was generally well received by both critics and audiences. It spawned a number of sequels and spin offs. Uh, the budget was two hundred and sixty two thousand and it made twelve million. So that's a pretty incredible blockbuster by any you know standard any uh, uh, adjusted for inflation and in modern times. So over the years, many sequels, of course, um, you know, different versions. Guillermo del Toro uh, expressed interest in directing a reboot. He's a big fan of it. He It was very close to being, uh, you know, a production, and they never did it. I'm looking at some notes back in 2009 was the last they said that Guillermo del Toro was really interested in doing it. And he never got it off the ground. Sadly, the reboot never happened. And of course, Boris Karloff as the monster, the creation. He can't be underestimated. I wrote an article about his eyes and how those, you know, his eyes, I mean, the makeup, sure, the, you know, the lighting, costumes, all these things play a role. But Boris Karloff's eyes, if you've seen him in any other movie, The Mummy as well, he has these incredible, engaging, and emotional eyes, and I think that was one of the other reasons why, you know, the the, the monster, the Frankenstein monster, in his portrayal, did so well. All right, now we're on to zombies, 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 and not the classical sort of voodoo, which most people probably forget. I sort of forget myself sometimes that zombies are were or, you know, our pop culture notion or mythological, you know, exploration. The depiction was voodoo, magic, you know, spells or religious spiritual creatures raised from the dead. You know, corpses shambling out of graves, not the George Romero, Night of the Living Dead, which starred the modern sci-fi ball rolling, sci-fi horror. So, Night of the Living Dead, 1968 American independent horror film, directed and photographed and edited by George A. Romero, with a screenplay by John Russo. It was made for $125,000, and it made $30 million. Not too shabby. Um, I guess a lot of you guys out there probably know that it became public domain um, because of a copyright screw-up, so to speak. And because it was in public domain, they did an official remake written by George Romero and directed by Tom Savini, best known for his makeup work. And that was from 1990, and it has similarly gained a small cult following. So what can you say about this other than it's still one of the, the best, I feel, one of the shocking, it's black and white, it's the gore level is, is you know much lower than all these other modern zombie movies, but... In terms of its impact, it can't be, you know, underestimated. And instead of, again, using supernatural or magic, it was the Venus probe, some radiation science fiction that, you know, reanimating corpses. And its legacy goes on right today. For decades later, all these zombie movies are radiation or potions or, you know, lab-inspired uh, or lab uh, created beings and now we enter space outer space well we don't really enter it but we certainly um take a ride there and that's with alien 1979 science fiction horror film directed by ridley scott and written by dan o'bannon based on a story by o'bannon and ronald chusette and this was and remains again another incredible milestone the uh, budget was 11 million and it earned almost $185 million in 1979. It has spawned so many sequels. Aliens, Alien 3, Resurrection. Uh, even a crossover with the Predator franchise, which will be our next sci-fi horror classic. Um, it keeps on going. You know, uh, again, we can't underestimate the idea of so many science fiction and science fiction horror films about aliens, alien invasions. And then Alien comes along and sort of 
in a way puts them to shame the makeup work the creature design the you know the spaceship all these things play a role and you look at it today and it still is so powerful so convincing many people look at it it's like the you know the monster in the, in the haunted house the monster in the house because they're in a spaceship and obviously they can't you know just run away <laughs> They have to stay there and slog it out with the monsters. So it's become sort of that metaphor of, you know, people trapped in this haunted house with this creature, with this demon. But in this case, it's an alien. So many accolades. Uh, this is a great one. In 2008, it was ranked by the American Film Institute as the seventh best film in the science fiction genre. The seventh best in the entire sci-fi genre and as the 33rd greatest film of all time by Empire Magazine. So that's some nice accolades. That's some nice, admirable, meritorious awards. And this is great. There's an audience research segment in the article. It says, it was a study that discusses memories of alien in the cinema and on home video from the point of view of everyday audiences, describing how many fans share the film with their children and the shocking impact of the chestburster scene, among other things. And I guess it really is one of the reasons it became. I remember as a kid, oh my God, people talk about the chestburster comes out of the chest and, you know, just such a, a weird, uh, you know, sci-fi horrific birthing, sort of almost a birthing scene. And it's just, it's almost unequal to, the, to today. Still to this day, it's a it's one of those scenes you really can't almost top. And now we go to a film that is linked to Alien. That's Predator, 1987 American sci-fi film directed by John McTurnan and written by the Thomas brothers, Jim and John. Okay, it was a budget of 15, almost 80 million, and it made almost 99 million, so almost 100 million. We've got a, a classic on our hands that just kept spawning more uh, sequels, as we know. Predator 2, Predators, The Predator, and most recently, Prey. And I believe that was on Hulu, um, which I heard was pretty good. And then, of course, Alien vs. Predator. Now, some people might say it's more of an action film, and that's true. But for me, and I think for a lot of people, you know, especially the first one, it's incredibly scary in ways. You're, you know, you're with a team of commandos. Fine, these are all kick-ass guys and all, but you're in this team. You're on this team in the jungle, and this thing is hunting you, and it can be invisible, and it's got laser, you know, weapons and ray guns that can slice it in half. So you know, pretty scary in many ways. Um, certainly the way. It, you know, it's design, it's sort of structure, and it's in the way it laughs and, and um, you know, talks or, you know, it's just very creepy and scary. And I think, to me, I haven't seen it yet, but the new, that new Prey looks pretty, you know, back to that, um, you know, to that vibe about something being hunted and the Prey not wanting to... Uh, to be hunted anymore. Some people don't know that Jean-Claude Van Damme, martial artist actor, was originally cast as the Predator. It says, with the intent of the physical action star would use his martial arts skills to make the Predator an agile ninja-like hunter. But when the five foot nine Van Damme was compared to Schwarzenegger, Weathers and Ventura, actors over six feet tall and known for their bodybuilding regimen, it became apparent a more physically imposing man was needed to make the creature appear threatening. So he was removed from the film and replaced by Kevin Peter Hall, an actor who towered at seven foot two inches. And he had just finished work as the Sasquatch in Harry and Henderson, so... And if you, of course, you know, you remember the battle at the end with Schwarzenegger, Kevin Peter Hall brings it with that suit and Schwarzenegger actually looks small for a change. It's amazing. And finally, uh, saving the best for last, perhaps, certainly for me, Phantasm. It's a 1979 American science fiction fantasy horror film directed, written, photographed, and edited by Don Coscarelli. 
the first film in the Phantasm franchise. It, introdu it introduces the tall man, Angus Scrim. Budgeted, is 300, budgeted at 300000 it made $22 million. And again, it's it's hard. I remember over the years being, I mean, I know there's lots of great scary moments. It's the vibe of it. The music is incredible. Um, everything about it. And I think one of the things as you get older, as you age, when you see these films, something about the, you know, the death sort of vibe. It, it, there's a mortuary, a cemetery in the, the story. You know, they lose um, loved ones and then they're like, well, what's happening at this mortuary? The, the idea of like, especially when you're a kid, you know, you go to, a, I remember being a kid and going to relatives' funerals and it was very strange at first. And then you kind of get used to it by the second or third funeral. But it still is like, wow, you know, that open casket, something that can be very, it's, it's a nice tribute to the deceased, but it can be very creepy as well. So Phantasm plays with all that, um, besides being just a great action film and a horror film, but it plays with that whole idea of where we go when we die. And there's a line, I think it's in the second one, um, and Angus Scrim, who's, again, one of the secret weapons of those films. They can remake them. They, I guess they can get another actor if they want, but Angus Scrim as the tall man is just amazing. But the line is something like... Um, you you when you you think when you die you go to heaven no you come to us i'm pretty sure and it's just chilling the idea of like what is the afterlife and could these creatures these aliens this you know invasion sort of ex exploitation force be using bodies for their own ends and i think that's what why it remains in terms of sci-fi horror one of the most chilling one of the most effective and just one of the most kick-ass, so enjoy if you have not. There's, uh, you know, so much to love. In Phantasm, one of my favorites, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're enjoying this season, the scary horror season. I know I am. I'm watching Pumpkinhead the other day and trying to explore. I'm, I've discovered a new, um, what seems to be a classic, Terrifier. Really good, the first one. I know the Terrifier 2 is terrifying the... Uh, the audience is right now so maybe we'll do a podcast on that again if you have not subscribed please do so we're free we're always free and if not we you can have the pay version that you get some goodies you get some nice extras that other people do not the freebies either or keep your messages your feedback keep on feedbacking us go watch some great sci-fi horror scare you and your loved ones silly and we'll see you soon